Um, got a developer, our 615 developer workshop, the Rogers Road single family homes. Who's going to speak uh, for that? And if you would, uh, I don't have, get up and introduce yourself and, and tell us what it's all about. Uh, thanks for taking time to listen to our project, whatever we are planning to do. Uh, my name is Naga Nalla. Uh, we are planning to do uh, development of single-family homes on the Rogers Road. So uh, can I go through the next? Uh, sure. Yeah. I want you to know that we're looking at it. Oh, okay. We're okay. looking at this while you're looking at that. Got it. So if you don't yeah. see us looking at that, we're, we're, we're looking at Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we are taking help from DPR Associates, engineering firm, and... Uh, uh, Justin and Kate are here, and Anil, my friend, we both are together planning to do this project on the Rogers Road. Okay. So this is the context map. Uh, this is the area we have the land, what we are planning to do. There's the existing church, and the church has about 13 acres of land, and they divided into five acres parcel, that, the uh, rectangle shape. Uh, that's what we are buying and, and planning to build the single family homes there. Uh, so, and uh, there is a existing sewer line, private line going to church and, and which we need to rebuild that. And there is a existing water line and the church is moving to, planning to move that water line into the land they are keeping, the church is keeping. So those are the two highlights on this. And this is the high level plan. Uh, there are, there is about 5.06 acres of land. Uh, we want to build 12 single-family homes. Uh, so it has some more details. Uh, current uh, zoning is R20 from Union County. Uh, we want to get rezoned into SFI and annexed into Indian Trial City. That's one of our requests. Uh, we want to build 12 single-family detached homes. Uh, 2.4 uh, uh, for each uh, acre, sorry, 2.4 units per acre. Uh, each lot size will be minimum of 6,700 square foot, minimum lot frontage is 50 foot. Uh, and uh, we gave the details of proposed uh, storm water control in the front, uh, the, the pond basically. Uh, proposed park number two, open space. Uh, proposed public street, it's existing street. I don't think we need to do anything there. Uh, number four is uh, utility easement. We need to get from the adjacent neighborhood, adjacent neighborhood. Uh, number five is public street connection. And also there's a turnaround, number six. And number seven is uh, proposed sewer, uh, sewer lateral connection. And that is what as part of this project, we'll build that and we'll give the connection to the church once we built it. Currently, it has a, I think, private sewer line, but we'll build the appropriate sewer line and give the connection to the church. So that's what we are planning. Any other questions? Are, are, you, are you done with the... Yeah. Okay. All right. Do, do, um, do you have any pictures of, of the... Uh, housing the houses that you uh, not yet no we didn't uh, you're you're in the pl preliminary stages okay. um, council do you have any questions what size homes are going in uh, anywhere from 2,000 to 2,500 square feet okay what do you say mm -hmm. two to 2,500 2, 2, right? 2, yes mm -hmm. now, do you own the property or does the church own the property right now means we are in the process of buying it okay. you're in uh, the process of buying it Correct. Okay. We are under contract. And, okay. So uh, yeah. Marty Benfield, the pastor, and the whole congregation goes okay with the purchase? I mean, the church is good with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are under contract. Okay. And, and uh, yeah. I, even church was in touch with uh, one of the... So I, I live over the, that way, so I didn't want them throwing tomatoes or nothing at me if I <laughs> want to approve this, you know. So on Sunday morning, I might be in a car accident or something over there. So I want to make sure they're okay with this, you know. Nobody yeah. throwing used Bibles or nothing at me. Yeah. So yeah. the, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a small lot. 
you know, I mean, my, my pets fertilize that land. So, um, but the, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's only 12 lots. I mean, and you say it's 2,000 to 2,500 square feet? Correct. And what's the average acreage size of each lot? Is that on here? 2.4 uh, dwelling units per acre, which it comes about 0.4 acres. So you're only looking at 12 houses. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, for that where that's at, it's beside another neighborhood. It's you know, it fits the area. Mm -hmm. Right. In my mind. Thank you. Any Thank other you. questions? I, I would suggest that you. Uh, well, I'd like I'd like to see some uh, pictures so we'll see of what, the whole so pictures of houses, or you see what what you're, you're building. What I guess uh, the uh, if Brandy's here, Brandy, you'd, would, you'd kind of want to see what they're made out of and, and, and that type of thing? Uh, they're not custom. No, no, but, but you know, if, if they fit the code or whatever. So this would require conditional rezoning, um, and we certainly work hard to negotiate uh, quality products, um, increasing the architectural value and integrity of it. Uh, we typically do have some sort of renderings at this stage, uh, but we do not for this project. But um, staff would ensure that it would be consistent with, with what we've approved over the last year or two. So you're still pretty early. Yes. Uh, you're still pretty early because it looks like to me you're going you're gonna to have to get some more design before you come back. Okay. All right. There's no more questions. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you coming, and, and uh, uh, we'll... You know, we'll see what happens. So. Okay. Thanks, thanks for the time. Today. Yeah, our pleasure. Good luck. Okay, well, that concludes our uh, workshop. So I guess we've got, uh, how many, what time is it? We got another, we got eight minutes. Eight minutes.
I'd like to welcome everybody to the 6.30 p.m. regular meeting, uh, Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. If we'd all stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Crystal, won't you lead us tonight? Pledge of Allegiance. You'll all remain standing for a moment of silence. <coughs> Please be seated. <clears throat> okay, the first uh, business item we have tonight is appointment of our new town attorney. Uh, I don't know, should, would you like to get up and introduce yourself or, or would you get up and introduce yourself? <laughs> Good evening. Thank you for having me. My name is Melanie Cox. Um, I work with my husband at Cox Law Firm. Our office is in Waxhaw, North Carolina. Um, I've been licensed to practice law since 2001 and have been practicing in municipal um, work representing several other towns in Union County since 2008. Um, I'm very excited to be here and happy to answer any questions you all may have. Well, we're very happy to have you. Thank you. Does uh, anybody have any questions for Ms. Cox? Ms. Cox, thank you very much. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. And uh, do I have a motion to? Uh... I'll, I'll, I'll get things off the ball, sir. Um, I'll make a motion to appoint Mrs. Melanie Cox with Cox Law Firm as a town attorney. All in favor? Unanimous. I have a second motion. Mr. Mayor, are you ready? I'm ready. I make the motion to approve the engagement letter for Melanie Cox of the Cox Law Firm. All in favor? That's unanimous. Now I want anybody to notice I did not vote on any of that. <laughs> anyway. uh, Crystal, I didn't vote on that. That's why he has his hands crossed. All right, that means we, uh, we'd like for you to take the oath of office. If you'd come up, Kathy, are you gonna? I'd be happy to. Constitution and laws of the United States, the Constitution and the laws of the United States, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office of town attorney, of my office of town attorney, so help me God, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Can you sign this for us? If you would come on up here, let's, let's have our picture made with our new attorney. Okay, that brings us to <clears throat> agenda additions and deletions. Do I have any, uh, do I have uh, any additions or deletions? Uh, I have some additions. Okay, okay. I want to add item 7N, approval budget amendment. Want to add item 9A, ARPA update. Would like to add item 9B, as in boy, Indian Trail ARPA policy. And I'd like to add, add item 9C, as in Charlie, fire trucks. Okay. So do we just want to make one motion for all of that? 
Yes, sir. Of, each one individually. So let's. Uh, Point of information. Are we making a motion that we're approving all these? No. We're, okay. we're, well, I guess this is for open for discussion. I'm, a th I'm thinking that's what this is for. What, what are, to the agenda. We're adding them to the agenda. Okay. I got you. <clears throat> Ms. Quinn, do we need a motion for all, or can we, or do we need them individually, or do we need all each I one? I believe we need a motion individually because these are some interesting items. So let's just have one motion for each. So I'll make a motion, Mr. Um, Mr. Mayor, to add item seven and approval of budget amendment. All in favor? Unanimous. All right. I'll make, an, I'll make a motion to add item 9A, opera update. All in favor? Unanimous. Make another motion for item 9B, B as in boy, Indian Trail opera policy. All in favor? Unanimous. And the last motion will be to add item 9C as in Charlie fire trucks. Okay, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. All right, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I make the motion to adopt the consent agenda. Okay. Mr. Buhalik made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. All right. We have presenta presentations tonight. You've got a, a new business, uh, United Martial Arts. <clears throat> the, we don't have anything <laughs> to say just other, other than the, on this. Well, uh, I know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you were trying to get my attention. Who is here to, to, to uh, oh, there you are. Okay, come, come on up and, uh, and talk about your, your, yourself and tell us who you are. And sure, thanks for having me. Thanks for the invite. Uh, my name is, is Sean Nolan. I'm the owner and head coach of Union Martial Arts, not United, Union Martial Arts, uh, right on Waxhaw Indian Trail Road, right by the water tower, uh, behind Cube Smart and Haywood Auto. Uh, we just opened our doors a few months ago. Um, I'm very proud to say the response from the community and the families and the students has been overwhelming. Uh, I've been a professional coach since 2007. And from 2009 till 2020, uh, I ran one of the largest and most successful martial arts schools in New York City. Obviously, the pandemic had other plans for all of us. 2020 brought a lot of surprises. Uh, the environment in New York um, wasn't the right environment for us. My wife and I looked at each other and we took our two young sons down here to Indian Trail about a year and a half ago. Uh, we've worked very hard to find a location and build the business. I've provided a flyer uh, which sums up the key points of the kids program and the adult program. But essentially what I teach is kickboxing and jujitsu from the very beginner new and nervous beginner, kids and adults, all the way through to the expert level. Um, and I would ask that you take a look at this flyer, of course, look at our website, unionmartialarts.com. Uh, and more than anything, perhaps, if you could also take a few minutes and just scan the Google reviews that we've received. Uh, nothing but five-star reviews in the past few months, and we're very proud of that. That's, that says a lot, coming from the students and the families there. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Very good. Does anybody have any questions? I'm just curious. How much H are your classes? Go, go ahead, Chris. I'm so well, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to see what's your pricing on your classes. Sure. There's two programs in our school. There, one of them is two classes per week, which is 149 a month. There's no contract in our school. Everything is month to month. Um, so that's two times a week is 149. The unlimited program in our school is 179 a month. And we offer very steep discounts for first responders, military, as well as family members. So whereas one person would be 149 in a family, the next person in a family would be $99. So we try to encourage that. And it's been very well received. We have a lot of parents that come in to start training, and then their children start, or vice versa. So it's a real family atmosphere at the school. It's been great. I just came from teaching a class, so still in flip-flops, forgive me. It's yeah. okay, Mr. Yeah. Barber. Go ahead. Um, you say you're doing adults and children? That's correct. Uh, age, age, beginning? Yeah, I start children as young as five. Five. Um, I have made some exceptions recently for kids that are close to their fifth birthday, but they can listen well and follow direction. Uh, so typically at five years old is where I start the kids. So you, you go on Monday through Saturday? I teach every single class Monday through Saturday, yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. 
I got some kids that are black belt, so I, I, oh. I think I think what you're doing is a great thing. Oh, and thank good you. For, it's good for kids' confidence, and yeah, you know, I don't even mess with my own kids anymore. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I, I'm scared of my father-in-law. He he's had schools in Indian Trail for Susan helped me out here over 20 years, yeah. and he's a master in jujitsu. Yeah. Um, I I I get it. You know, yeah. I'm scared of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't harm the wife. Yeah. Yeah. Peace through question? strength. Yeah. Well, I have one question. What brought you down to Indian Trail? How did you find out about Indian Trail? Well. Um, <laughs> Of course, when New York City shut my business down, uh, my wife and I started talking with, you know, well, I'm sure we all had a lot of FaceTimes, right? With everyone, right? Because we couldn't see anyone. Um, we kept in touch with family here in Indian Trail. And my wife has uh, an aunt and uncle who live in the area in Union County. And I have a friend who's been down here for six years. They were raving about it. Um, and we, we decided to move. We had never even visited Union County, but we, we just took their advice, and we love it. We're very happy we came. We're glad you're here. And, Thank you. Uh, and welcome. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for coming. And yeah, please we visit the school. We have a plaque to give you here. Oh, and, wow. Uh, Thank you. Council, do you, you want to come down and get your picture made again? You, you're welcome to always come down and have your picture made. Well, no, go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Just leave you. All right. You can handle the key. He looks too hey, fit yeah. beside me. Give him a pose. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> okay, next uh, on the agenda, space sharing with public service officials. Uh, Pastor Morris, come on up. Hello, everyone. Just to clarify, I am the poor Philip Morris. Okay. I thought that sounds like my congregation jokes. Very good. That made me feel right at home. First of all, thank you all so much for this. I appreciate the opportunity to come here and share about our church. Now, we have been in the Union County area since 2009. Pastor Steve Starling started the church, moved here from uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina. He, got, he declined in health, had a couple of back surgeries, knee surgeries, and just couldn't carry on anymore, so I took over in 2019, and we was in the building behind Interstate Batteries, um, and we just moved into Indian Trail December 20th of 2020, so during the COVID pandemic, God led us um, by that facility. So one question everybody asks me is, do you have to have a bike to be a part of that church? And the answer is absolutely not. Matter of fact, probably majority of our con congregation does not ride. And there's been conversations as to changing our names from Freedom Biker to possibly Freedom Community Church because that's what we're here to do is minister to the community. So one way we are doing that is with the, the public officials. We started off, I was chaplain for Waxhaw Police Department for two years, so I know what it's like to ride around in a car and have to use the facilities at gas stations, et cetera, et cetera, with the officers. So before, I guess during the, the time our building was vacant, or maybe before, the Union County Sheriff's kind of took residency in our parking lot, and we took note of that. And uh, we also have a good rapport with the Outlaw Motorcycle Club here in Union County, and, and they took note of that. As soon as we told them where our new building was, they're like, oh yeah, that's where the sheriffs hang out all the time. But seeing that and seeing them in our parking lot, you know, we thought we just renovated our fellowship hall, two bathrooms, full kitchen, four ovens, two stoves, refrigerator. Why don't we put a code lock on the door and give them the code to it? We're not there, but two times a week, Sunday mornings, Wednesday afternoons, Wednesday evenings. So it's sitting there vacant. They're in our parking lot. What a great way to, to let them use our facility. So we took that a step further. One lady knew what we was doing and really loved it. She bought a brand new Keurig, brought a bunch of pods for it, and she said, I want to donate this just for that ministry. Another lady, couldn't be outdone, said, I'm going to go buy some snacks. So we have now, I've heard that they're doing PT this week, so they haven't been digging into the snacks, but everyone I've talked to, I said, now look, those are for you. If you don't eat them, I'm going to have to, so please take advantage of that. And uh, they are starting to. They've left us some notes saying, you know, we really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Last Wednesday we come out and there was uh, one of the deputies in there 
And I guess he heard us, and he came out. He thanked us three times, and this is what he said and why I love doing this. He said, it is so nice being able to come in here, take off my vest, write my report, and not have to look over my shoulders. I said, man, I'm thankful we can do that. So it was as easy as that. Now, we've also carried that on, and we gave access to the, the EMTs. We know they roam in their ambulances around here, and so if they need to stop in, use a restroom, get a drink of coffee, we got water, coffee, snacks, that's what it's there for. In the future, we hope to uh, you know, be more of a, a ministry in this community. We're right down the road from Sun Valley. We're hoping our youth program will grow into some kind of ministry there. We'll just see what happens. So, again... That's what we're doing right now. We're very thankful that we can do it. Uh, thank you all for what you do. So, um, any questions? Mr. Barber? Uh, thanks for the invite. I had a enjoy, really enjoyed the service yep. and the barbecue yep. afterwards. You feed me, I'm going to be happy for sure. <laughs> but uh, anyway, when's your uh, regular service? Uh, Sunday morning at 1030 and Wednesday Seven. evening at 7 o'clock. Okay. And you have an Easter service? This Sunday, we're actually having a um, sunrise service at 7 o'clock in the morning. I know this probably okay, detour just, a lot of people. Does everybody know you're pretty much located over behind the movie theater? Yeah, Wesley, Wesley Chapel. Chapel Stouts Road. Okay, and uh, you're having something Saturday called the Blessing, Blessing of, of the, the Bikes. Bikes. Now, we are right now a biker church, and for since 2019, we have rapport with a lot of the motorcycle clubs, ministries, veteran groups, etc. So we've invited all of them. We're going to do a Blessing of the Bikes now. I'm going to tell them point blank, I'll bless your machine if you want me to, but I'm really here for you, um, the people. We've done blessing of the box at bars and other places. We wanted to do it Easter weekend because we thought that would be a good way, you know, everybody's thinking the same thing this weekend. Um, but, yeah, this is our first real, um, in our new facility, outreach to the community and in in inviting the motorcycle clubs into our facility. So I'm kind of excited to see we have food trucks, a uh, live band, biker games, be fun to watch. So you want to come see something interesting in your community. And that's open to the public. What open time to is the that public, on starting at, at noon. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Very appreciate good question. Anybody else? Well, I appreciate you, uh, I appreciate you coming here. And uh, I think we're very fortunate to have you here. And, well, thank uh, you. And what you're doing. And I feel pretty good because tonight I've, I've – We've got a martial arts guy here and the, and the motorcycle uh, people. I feel pretty safe. You know, yeah, at least and, one uh, gun. Make, make some new friends here is, <laughs> yeah. is what it's all about, man. So, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, he can mess you up. He can pray over your wounds. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you for, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, one one you. thing, though, um, if you would, keep uh, the town of Indian Trail in your all's prayers. Absolutely. You know, just bless us. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Very good. Mr. Humsinger. <clears throat> See if I can fit this in here. Uh, Mayor, Council, uh, uh, here tonight to present, this is what we call in our uh, pavement condition uh, dashboard. Um, this uh, idea was brought to our attention when we did our uh, RFQ process for uh, uh, getting a selection of uh, a firm to do our pavement condition survey. And uh, this is one of the things they presented to us in our interview process, and I thought it was a... I thought it was a good idea because it's a it's kind of a, it's a showcase of uh, the big picture of what our town looks like when it comes to our pavement uh, pavement rating system. Uh, this is what we use to basically uh, come up with our resurfacing projects uh, every year. Uh, we we take these ratings ratings meaning it's just like grade level. It's zero to hundred. Hundred being your best. Zero being obviously your worst. Well, in 2014-15 was the last time we had done one. And our average rating at that time, once we started doing our resurfacing projects, we got them pretty much all the way up to about 85 average. Well, as you can see on this dashboard, if you look at the right-hand side of your screen, it's at a 60. That 60 right there is your average throughout the town of what the rating system of your streets are right now. So we've got some catching up we've got to do now. Um, but this, again, this is helpful for us as a, as a staff. Uh, that's obviously web-based. 
we can certainly put it out to the public if you want to, but uh, we're going to use it to ba uh, basically be able to uh, to uh, get these contracts together in an easier fashion instead of sitting there pouring through spreadsheets and all that. But I wanted to kind of give you an overview of what this thing can do. Um, and uh, so, for instance, let's just go around the, the uh, screen here. You got on the left-hand side of your screen, you got filter roads. What you can do is you can click on this road and it'll zoom in straight into the uh, into that uh, particular roadway system. Um, and then on the right-hand side, if you go over here and just uh, hover over each color scheme, you'll see, okay, obviously green's good. Success, that means 168 segments of roadways in town are in good condition. 172 are in satisfactory and so forth and so on. All right, then obviously this gives you your average. And then down here gives you details on the road itself, like when you click to select, which we'll do in a minute. But you come down here, you scroll, you can get the linear foot of the segment. You can get the uh, PCI rating, name of the road, et cetera. Just uh, several uh, items of information. So as you can see, just as a broad scheme of things, we, we, we have a lot of green out there, so that's a good thing. Uh, but we have a lot of red, too. And you, as you can see, the red is in the area of pretty much Brennan Oaks and Holly Park um, and uh, Brook Valley area. So obviously, that's probably what we're going to start concentrating on for these next couple of years, uh, try to get some of these uh, phases. I call these phases. Brennan Oaks has several legs off the main line of the Brennan Oaks Parkway. And that's what we try to tackle. Um, you can't see it here, but we've, like, all right, for example, we tackled this area early on about two years ago. So that's why that's all green. So we're going to start running down this, this main thoroughfare and, and trying to get these clusters back to green, pretty much. Uh, Holly Park, last few years, we've concentrated on the right side of Holly Park. So obviously you can see that that is green. We need to start looking at the left side of Holly Park. And then Brook Valley was kind of an eye-opener because our, obviously our data was older uh, in 2014. We had decent ratings back then, and now obviously they're not. And so we got to start concentrating on Brook Valley. So the, that way the public knows why we're selecting roads the way we are. This is a, a good indicator to show, well, look, we don't really need to concentrate on the north side because we concentrate on this side. This was Beacon Hills, Chris Mark. Uh, years ago, a lot of Chris Mark roads are kind of fairly new, about uh, five or six years old. Big Hills, we did a lot of work in. Uh, this is Bonterra, Annadale, Philstone Farms. Again, fairly new roads, uh, not very old, uh, except for Phase One of Bonterra. It's fairly old that we all have to obviously pay attention to later down the road. But uh, everything else is kind of a mismatch. Uh, this is an older subdivision here. Um, that eventually we'll have to tackle. But again, uh, it makes life easier for staff if we have this tool to be able to just go in here and select and uh, and get a rating. Um, and also, this also has our in sign inventory. So if you come and zoom down through here, you'll see stop sign symbols, street name symbols. When you go to click on this, it'll actually pop up. And that uh, they used a... They use a, a vehicle, a vehicular van with a video camera and everything. And that's how you get these pictures. You click on a picture, it'll bring it up. It'll show you the stop sign. So again, something Adam Adam could use, or uh, or his public works uh, guys could use, as far as uh, seeing if a sign needed to be fixed or was it in good condition ahead of time. Is it not? Um, street name signs, we obviously don't maintain, but we wanted the inventory anyway because they're already there. They can capture the photo. It didn't cost us anything extra uh, as far as pricing. So, again, you can go in here and click on that. We also, I didn't want to show it on here, uh, but we do have the sidewalk inventory as well. So I can go click on a layer <clears throat> in this tab and sh pull up every sidewalk in town um, as well, and so we have our sidewalk inventory. We can go in here and start looking at where where we need to fill in connections in the future as well. 
Um, but just to give you uh, an, an indication how this works, basically you got this link here, which is an identification link. And so you go in here and you, you take it, you click on a road, and it gives you the, the rating of that road right there. And then you go in here to just take it away, exit out of it. And then it zooms you back in. This is just a home tab, basically gives you back this screen. <clears throat> These are your good, good, fair ratings. And there's your ratings, a good is 100 through 85, satisfactory 84 to 70, and so forth and so on. And then you have layers, which we, again, talks about the sidewalks and everything. And then you have imagery mapping, which is a plus, but, you know, I don't know if we're really going to use, but you can go in here and actually click on an image, uh, uh, a mapping that has, like, contours of, of the, the whole entire area. Um, you got, like, an outline map, uh, you know, it just outlines the roads. Uh, so anyway, it's just uh, stuff that you know, didn't cost us any extra, but you know, and the default is obviously imagery hybrid. So uh, anyway, just kind of wanted to get uh, let you know about the the project, what we got out of the project. We're still trying to wrap up data for that. Uh, another good thing we got from this uh, process is what we call lidar. Uh, survey. So when they came through here and, and drove these roads, they basically ran LIDAR in there. And LIDAR is pretty much almost like 3D mapping. So now we actually have, sur it's not a, the, ac the most accurate survey, but it is somewhat of a survey of every road in town now to where we can go in there and use that LIDAR, throw it into our, uh, our AutoCAD, um, and we may have to do some spot elevations with the survey, but it'll save costs in future uh, uh, projects if we need to upgrade facilities as far as uh, these existing roadways. Uh, so that's a good thing as well. All right, any questions about the dashboard? We're trying to trying to uh, still get some kinks out of it. So I, you know, if you do want to make it public, that's fine. But I. Give me some time. Let me get all these things. So obviously, I don't want somebody coming here and nitpicking this today because I'm sure they're going to find something wrong. Everybody does. So uh, let us uh, play with it a little bit more and get all the kinks out. Okay. And then y'all can make a decision if y'all want to put it out on the website or not. Very good. Uh, just one quick thing, Todd. I, I wanted to. Uh, I met Todd earlier this week, and, and I wanted to thank Todd. And, and he does a wonderful job. I met Todd and the town manager in the neighborhood uh, with some stormwater issues and uh, I couldn't have gone with any better people and Todd handled the situation pretty darn good and I uh, appreciate it appreciate your hard work and appreciate your professionalism so uh, just want to thank you thank you mayor yes sir okay all right appreciate it <clears throat> that brings us to public comments these rules were established by the Indian Trail town board and apply to public comment participants. As a reminder, they are read at each meeting before public comments are received. The board thanks you for sharing your thoughts and concerns. Please state your name and if you are a resident of Indian Trail, clearly for the record. Please elect a representative for multiple individuals having similar messages. Each speaker or representative will have three minutes to uh, state their concerns. Comments should be directed to the entire board and not to specific individuals. Speakers are to remain respectful with reasonable standards of civility. Please refrain from communicating grievances regarding town staff in this forum. We ask that you direct those to the town manager. All documents submitted to the board become town property and may be available as request. Anonymous general writing public comments will be read. Regarding comments for public hearings, anonymous writings will not be read. All other written public comments will be read for a restricted period of 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, remaining written comments will be noted as either opposing or supporting. After speaker may be, any speaker may be asked to discontinue or be disallowed to speak by the board if the board rules are, are violated. And last, comments may be recorded and broadcasted on the internet. Okay, uh, first public comment is by Michael Falkenberry, and he's not here, so here it is. I'm going to read it. 
Good evening. Please submit the following for the public comments to be read during the April 12, 2022 council meeting. It has come to my attention from Stallings Council Member David, is that pronounced? Scroll? Is that? Is it? Soul? Soul. David Scholl. That Melanie Cox, uh, who is to become the new town attorney for Indian Trail, is currently the town attorney for the town of Stallings. Since the town of Stallings is just next door to the town of Indian Trail, could pose a conflict of interest since both towns could compete for the same economic development projects and attorney services could be necessary in dealing with land developers. Who would Ms. Cox represent, the, Stown, the town of Stallings or the town of Indian Trail? If this would ha were to happen, if she were to recuse herself from representing either town, then the town of Indian Trail would have to hire an attorney for a specific purpose of what is needed, another ex expense paid by the taxpayers. A good example was when the town of Indian Trail had to hire an additional attorney, uh, it says nine law firm, I don't really know what that means, to deal with the former town manager fiasco. I also I assume due to the issues involved, which were never made public through, though we, were, we know what happened, don't forget who helped appoint the former town manager and who is now mayor and he is... He, he was warned about the former town manager's character, past history, but he didn't seem to care but only to demean and marginalize the person who provided the information. I have attended uh, town of Stallings council meetings, and I'm sure Ms. Cox is a good attorney for Stallings, but the perception of her being the attorney for both towns could have a negative impact. There's also the potential of having scheduled conflicts in both the town of Stallings and Indian Trail schedule a special council meeting simultaneously due to beating a deadline. Does Ms. Cox represent other municipalities in Union County and in the surrounding area? I would like to thank Marcus McIntyre for representing the town of Indian Trail during the last CRTPO meeting in March. I still uh, can't understand why the Indian Trail CRTPO primary and alternate delegates can't attend a virtual meeting the last three months. I had recommended Dennis Gay, Tom Ambergy, and also Marcus McIntyre back in December uh, as the CRTPO delegates for Indian Trail. Dennis Gay resigned as the CRTPO delegate, and the reason he gave me was he didn't know very much about CRTPO. Then why did he accept the job to begin with? As with any new job, your research and, and learn to do the job. So far, Mr. McIntyre, who was not considered as a CRTPO delegate in December, is the only one who has stepped up who call, who, when called upon, though it was appointed, his appointed duty. By all means, I welcome council feedback with concerns. Thank you, Malcolm, Michael Falkenberry. That brings us up to, I believe it's pronounced David Pergamus. Per, Pat, I knew it, Patagemus. I, I knew that. I was getting ready to say that. Come on up, Mr. Patagemus. Good evening. It's David Patagemus. I live at 805 Carmona Court. Um, just quickly, I read through your financial statements, clean audit, very nice. I'm a retired CPA. I met your finance director, so some of my issues I'll follow up with him. Um, it, it's good to see that the town is flush with cash. I mean, you have a my calculations, excess fund balances of 16 million, you got your $10 million state um, grant, and you've got uh, the $12.7 million American Rescue Fund. Uh, it's nice that this kind of dovetails off the last gentleman, because one of my concerns is, I come from Connecticut four years ago from a small town, we had 42, mi uh, 42 square miles of town and 80 miles of roads. We found ourselves in a position, and I was involved in town government over the years, um, very far behind in regards to <clears throat> roads and upkeep. And in looking at that map, I think my personal opinion is that my road is a, is a red road. Um, so I would urge you in the budget process to the extent you can take these funds and spend them wisely and get our infrastructure, especially the roads, up to speed. Uh, and you can throw my road in there, too. Thank you. Well, welcome, and thank you for, for coming up and speaking, and come back any time. We'd love to have you. Thanks. Thank you. There, there you go. That's a good, he's a good man right there. Okay, next. Susan, come on up. God bless you. 
bless this council. <laughs> you do so much. My name is Susan Simili. I know you know me. I'm an Indian Trail resident. I just had two quick questions. I noticed on the website the financials, the annual financials stop at 2015. So I wonder when 16 through 20 would be posted. And secondly, um, I was looking at the audit as well, not as thoroughly as the Starman, but I wonder what the relationship is between the Town of Indian Trail and the ABC board. And then also, I guess there's a second uh, retail uh, store that's going to go up. And I just wondered if you knew or that it was already determined where it would go up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that brings us a, a close to the public comments. Does anybody have any public comment? I, I, mean, I uh, do. I do, actually. Okay. Um, if I may. Thank sure. you. Um, the gentleman who spoke from Connecticut, you mind, sir? Mind me asking what town in Connecticut you're from, sir? Suffield, Connecticut. Right okay, good. All right. I went to school, University of Bridgeport, Bridge, Connecticut, I, um, and I lived in West Haven for quite a few years. So um, if you're around after, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. Um, second question, Mr. Mayor, is Mr. McLaurin, the two Sorry. questions that Susan, Miss Susan, is it? It is? Yes. Raised. Can we get her some information on that? I know we have that information in terms of the financials yeah. and also the location of the ABC store on what the relationship is. If we can get that to her, that would be helpful. We'll be glad to, and we'll make sure everything's posted on the website. Appreciate so, you, thank sir. You. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Mr. Barber. Oh, to answer your question is, we have $30 million in the general fund. Uh, 12 million of that is restricted, and 18 million is available. Uh, in the budget's last two years, we've added $2 million to the general fund. Uh, to give you an idea, the, the town maintains 80 miles of roads, to answer your question. Uh, one of the things on the budget, what they're asking for was a paver. And so, uh, and with the 12 million, like you said, yes, that is very restrictive coming in for American Rescue Funds. But one of the things that it does address is transportation and I think water. So in the budget and different process, just so you'll know, yeah, we're looking at that and the red areas on the roads and that, you know, so just wanted to kind of answer your questions, if that's okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Just real quick, Susan, I'll, I'll let you know what the connection between the town and the ABC board is. The, the town and ABC board in every town, I, I'm assuming, in, the, in North Carolina, is the, the ABC store is, is the, uh, there for the function of the town. It gives all of its profits to the town. Uh, so that is why, and that is the connection. So uh, there's actually an ABC board. That, that's that's in Raleigh or the ABC that that runs all the ABC stores, but the ABC store is actually uh, the council uh, oversees the people that that run the store. So it's actually run by two entities. It's run by Raleigh and it's run by the t the town, and you have sets of rules in, in both of them. So, but it's for the sole purpose of tax money brought to every every dollar except for what goes to charities, goes to the town. So that, that's what the purpose of it's for. And that's what the connection is. So that, hopefully that, that answers your question. So any other questions, you're happy to ask me later on. I'll be happy to answer any other questions you might have about it. So, okay. Um, that gets us through uh, general comments, council comments, law enforcement. Mr. Captain James. Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, very quickly, uh, you got the report from the month of March in front of you. A uh, couple things I wanted to point out to you: 247 total reportable offenses last month, which was a a pretty big increase, a little bit over 50 uh, from the month prior. And a lot of that I want to I want to blame on is starting to get warm and people are starting to move a little more. Um, but some of that is petty theft as well. Uh, our garages are getting left open again, doors are getting left open and unlocked, and so you're going to start seeing. Um, people walking through the community and grabbing door handles. Um, 568 business checks, uh, 4,710 preventative patrols in the neighborhoods, uh, then 117 crashes. 18 of those 117 resulted in some kind of personal injury to them. Um, 
and that's up from February on the crash status, but not a huge jump on the injuries. We're keeping those injuries about the same. I'd like to see those injuries at zero, uh, but we are making an impact on that. 7,625 total calls for service last month, and then that was up uh, a little over 1,300 from February. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Captain James? Yeah, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm amazed at how many 911 hangups you guys have. And, I mean, is it kids doing it, or is it people getting mad and then hanging up, or what is it? No, is the, they result a lot in, off, off of mobile telephones. Um, people will miss dial numbers, and you know, we're chasing a mobile telephone for 35 minutes trying to get a location on it uh, off of the GPS, off the phone. Um, I don't want to say they're all just hang-up calls because uh, probably a third of those result in being some type of legitimate call for service yeah. uh, once they get on scene or find out who did it. That has to run you crazy. It does. It does. It does. Yeah. Mr. Barber? <clears throat> well, it is uh, National Telecommunications National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. You know, Telecommunicator so. <laughs> Week. That's <laughs> Maybe right. That's Telecommunicator. That's increase. right. <laughs> you know, and, uh, but I, I, he could probably relate to this. He's, we got a former dispatcher supervisor here, so, you know, I guess I'm doing that. But anyway, I just want to say great job. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Captain James. Thank you for all y'all do. Appreciate thank you. you. Mm -hmm. and, and you are a sharp dress man. I'm going to tell you right now. Wait, I'm going to break my vest out for so. There you go. <laughs> Okay, that brings us to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion? Motion uh, to approve the consent agenda. Beg your pardon? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, all in favor. I almost raised my hand. I turned my hand that time. I'll, I, got a, I have a question. Let's see, we're on what now? Uh, seven. Does this include the... the uh, on oh, new business, okay, we're on the consent agenda, not the new business, we're on the consent agenda, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, all right. Okay, again, mm -hmm. all in favor? Unanimous. All right, I guess Ms. Deese. Uh, we don't, I'm sorry, Ms. Deese, don't come up here. I am just read your name off the thing. Uh, we don't have any, uh, we have no public hearings, so I just like calling your name out. How's that? I'm sorry. Uh, old business. ARPA update, Mr. McLam. Hello, everyone, and good evening. I am going to try to make sense of what ARPA is. We will see how far I can succeed in that or get kicked back from it. Um, first thing that I'll say is we've been meeting internally as a group, uh, finance and some other departments that we've needed to pull in to help us try and absorb the amount of information that's coming to us. So we've, just in the last two weeks, we've had four staff members sit through about 12 hours of training just on specific little pieces as we move through this. So when we say something, we try and give you all the best information that we can, but the information is forever changing. Every time we feel like we understand the direction that we've gotten through the red legislation and come down through the, you know, all the different pieces, something else pops up and then we have to go back and rethink what we just talked about. So I want to talk through a few things that are going on and then open it up for any questions that y'all may have. And if I can't answer them, the gallery in the back of the room is going to throw something at me and they're going to answer the question. So, um, y'all know that the town was awarded $12.7 million through ARPA relief, American Rescue Recovery, or American Rescue Plan Act. Um, we have to date received one installment of those funds, $6.387 million. We expect to receive the other $6.387 million end of July, August-ish time frame of this year. We say expect. There has been talk at the federal government level of clawback of funds. We don't know what that means. We don't know if they're going to do that, but there is all that chance in the world. The interim rule originally came out in May of 
2021. With that interim rule, there was, we talked about this at the last budget meeting, a lot of just ambiguity. We didn't really know what could and couldn't be spent and where it could be spent at. The final ruling came out January of 22, so this year. So when that final rule came out, it cleared up a lot of things. The biggest thing that it changed, it, is a, it allowed out of the five pots, if you remember what we talked about before, so you have that revenue replacement pot, you have public health, COVID related, you have economic impact, COVID related again, premium pay, infrastructure. On the infrastructure side through ARPA funds, the only thing that the town really can put in that bucket is stormwater. It doesn't open up for streets or different things in the ARPA fund, it doesn't. So when we look at those buckets, when the final rule came out, one of the things that they allowed for was a standard, basically drawdown of revenue replacement of $10 million. You can pull that down a one chance time to pull that down and that'll be on our first report that's due, that finance is working on, that'll go, it has to be in by April 30th. All that to say, we weren't able to actually spend any dollars in that revenue replacement line until April 1st, 2022. So, I don't know, 11 days ago. Um, we could have in other funds, but not in revenue replacement, unless if we would have taken the formula that came out through the interim rule, which was only about $500,000. I'd rather take 10 million then I would 500,000. So what we have, as staff have made a recommendation of that we made that recommendation at the last budget meeting is to take that standard uh, revenue replacement of $10 million, use that $10 million to pay the sheriff's office contract over the next two and a half, give or take years. Then that frees up in our general town dollars, make your brain step away from ARPA, step into general town dollars. Now we have basically in year one, so this budget year we're going into, you'd have 3.7 million available. Year two, because you can only use the money when you pay for the money, you would have three, roughly if we do some math, we're gonna go up in that contract just because of inflation. So you'd have a little bit more than 3.7. The following year, you'd only be able to pay about half of the contract, whatever it ended up being, $2 million round numbers. So now step back over to the, your ARPA dollars. You're thinking now back in, we're good, we've paid that sheriff's office contract with that uh, revenue replacement bucket. There's some other buckets there. One of those is infrastructure. So one thing that the group we've talked about is y'all approved uh, First Avenue stormwater project of a little over $2 million. That's actually an eligible expense through ARPA dollars through that infrastructure budget. So we can actually use that infrastructure budget now to pay for that project. We don't have to go to town dollars to pay for that project. We can actually use that bucket, use some of the federal government's money to pay for that project for the citizens. We still have a little bit of money to figure out where we're gonna balance this out at to get to the 12.7, but we have time to do that. If you remember, we have to expend funds by December 31st of 26. We have to obligate those funds back up by December 31st of 24. We have been given recommendation by the School of Government to try and spend all of our funds by that, or at least very, very close to that December of 24. That way you don't run into a problem where you basically have obligated, but you run over that time frame of December of 26, and then you don't get to claim any of those dollars. Now you're on the hook for all that. If you don't get it in, you're on the hook for it. So speed up your spending. We have heard from council and council has heard from the public about projects that they would have liked to have seen done through ARPA or other items that are on the agenda tonight to talk about. Some of those items include 
fire trucks, they include athletic associations, VFW, Boy Scouts, Sheriff's Office upgrades, Food for Families, Cameron's House, Water Lines for underserved areas of town, and the Lions Club. Those are the ones that we've heard so far. Of those projects that I just listed, I'm not saying that all of those are fundable. What I'm saying is we have heard the requests come in. We are trying to make sure that we can fund those, but those will not be funded through ARPA dollars. Those are funded through that revenue replacement of freed up funds in town dollars, not ARPA dollars, town dollars. So that's a lot of information very quick. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Let's raise our hands. We have a question, <laughs> Mr. McIntyre. All right. So you mentioned that the revenue replacement is a one-time event. Correct. But we didn't get twelve point seven million dollars one time. We are getting it in two tranches, right? Correct. Six point three five, six point three eight seven, mm -hmm. August last year. Six point three eight seven, August this year. If it's a one-time revenue replacement, and we know that of the twelve point seven, only ten million can be. So let's say. The, the 1.387, we cannot claim. We can claim five. How can we claim, claim 10 when it's a one-time event? How are we going to do that, um, that type of math? Math? Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Don't know that I can quite answer that, other than they've said that you could claim 10 million. They've said that they're going to give us 12.7. I guess they're going on the assumption that they're going to give you at least what they told you they were going to give you. No, but what I'm saying is, do we? Do, does that mean that? Sorry, let me just back up my question. Does that mean that we wait? I hate. I'm not. This is not me trying to stump you at all. This is me trying to understand. <laughs> you threw out it. a good first one. I will say. <laughs> <laughs> because well, does that mean that we wait till August to? Claim the 10 million because it's a one time event, so we get the 10. We or have does to. That mean that we can claim because if it's a one time event and we claim five now, we can't go back and claim five again. See, right. you kind of see. Sorry. No, no, you're good. We can claim the full 10 yes, you right now. You elect the standard okay. There you go. We elect the standard allowance one time. That's the $10 million allowance. So when the funds come when in, when the it'll funds just... come in, it would just roll into that allowance. All right, thank you. There yeah, but go. you guys, good you job. Guys got See, it. look at this and teamwork. Tom, yeah, but um, I'm sorry, Dennis. I, I, did I, I, I bump you, you Dennis? Go ahead. I'm so sorry. Um, but you're saying that the other part, additional half, if you will, is not guaranteed that it'll come in August. They might claw it back, if you will. Clawing it back means they're going to take it back, folks. You know, they're not going to give it to us. Or is there a potential for them to, Jim, to take that six point, whatever we have right now from them back? We have not heard that. That money is sitting in our well, bank account. Right. So, so let's don't procrastinate, you know, and we need to spend this money before they change the rules again. You know, they've changed the rules over and over and over again. And I mean, they're coming up with new updates, Alicia. Right. Um, so why can't we go ahead and move forward with um, First Avenue in a timely manner so as not to get interrupted, you know. So First Avenue is already going. A contractor's already been selected. They're waiting on pipe to come in to start that project. That project is Good. headed down the, t the train tracks. Well, spend the money. All right. Yeah. Okay, Ben. Okay. I'm uh, fully supportive of the Sheriff's Office, the uh, Fire Department. Uh, but I've got an issue with the way this is being done with the fire uh, with the fire trucks. Uh, we it wasn't on the agenda Thursday, and from what you're telling me, this is actually going to come out of town funds because it's being uh, rolled over since you're getting the ARPA funds to go into other areas. Is that what you basically what you said? That is our recommendation because okay. if it was to come out of ARPA funds, uh -huh. they they would have to follow all of the requirements that we have to follow for ARPA to expend those funds. Okay. Here's my concern. Uh, it, the fire trucks, what we're getting ready to do right now, was not on the agenda Thursday. It got put on the agenda today to be voted on. It's four and a half million dollars, and it's coming, it's actually coming from, as, as you're recommending, coming from the, the, the funds of the town. And uh, I would feel a whole lot better about this if we, if it was on the next agenda, people knew it was on the agenda, so we'd have transparency. They could. I mean, they could understand what this is all about, but it, 
I mean, just a perception of it looks bad that it wasn't on the agenda, it went out to the public, it got put on the agenda today, and four and a half million dollars is a lot of money for the people not to be told in advance is uh, gonna be approved. Now, if you wanted to put, if you wanna change it and say that we make a motion to consider the fire trucks and bring it up next month so the public knows you're talking about spending this money, um, I think that would be acceptable, but the way it's being done today, um, I don't think is the proper way to do it. So I hear what you're saying, Council Member Gay, and I would throw that question back to the board. You know what I mean? That that's I, I'm just giving y'all information how yeah, how I mean, items are placed I, on the agenda or voted on. I'm saying I think that should be tabled to the next meeting and and in the next agenda. I mean. One time we had somebody say that they didn't have to go to the town to change a light bulb, and that was several million dollars, and this is several million dollars. And, you know, I'm not saying put it on a referendum, but I think that the public should know in advance. And if there's any, I mean, there's been people who have asked, well, we already have, we pay prop, uh, fire taxes, you know, why do they need this or whatever? I just think that they, have, they need to have the opportunity to come in and ask those questions, and maybe let's have a presentation on, um, you know, the, the fire department, what they need, why they need it, that sort of thing, because this is just kind of blind being pushed through. Mr. Barber. Well, we <clears throat> always have the opportunity to add something to the agenda. And at the beginning of the meeting, we did that. Mm -hmm. And it was unanimous. So it's on the agenda. So oh, uh, we're talking four and a half million dollars. Know, that's, that's not chicken feed. You voted for it. I didn't vote for anything. You voted to put it on the agenda. Well, I'm gonna uh, it's put it on the agenda so we could discuss it. Well, we can discuss it. All right, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, as far as the fire trucks go, um, you know, when we got this fun these funds for the town, um, we have to use it. You know, and we have till what the 20, 2026, December thirty first, and we have to assign that money. Uh, by the end of 24 or 23? That is correct. 24. 24. So our thought process was let's do something good for the town and our, you know, the people, uh, the, the support, if you will. Um, I've spoke to all three fire department chiefs in the town, and um, as far as they're concerned, they feel like they're the redheaded stepchildren of Indian Trail because Indian Trail um, we don't have to do anything for them because the county supports that. However, um, when, when I was one of the initial ones to say, let's, how about let's do something for the fire department, and we all came up with, you know, not all of us, but I, I, mean, I think you ag agreed with it, Dennis, that we wanted to do something nice for the fire department. And, you know, their equipment is um, it's not up to date, if you will. All of them aren't, but we thought we'd do that for them versus... I don't know what else we could have done with the money, honestly. And, you know, and I agree that the town needs to know why, what we're spending the money on, um, but I think it's a great gift from the federal government to us to do good things with. So well, I, I agree with all that, but to put it on a, uh, the agenda of the day that you're going to vote on it for that kind of money and not have uh, the, the uh, opportunity for input by the public is just not right. I'm not trying to stop the discussion on what we're talking about, but I do want to Nothing you try. Can yeah, well, I want to try and follow the agenda a little bit too. So we we are right now in an ARPA update. I am just trying to give y'all information on ARPA. Then there's the the next item, which is policies, the policies, and then the last item in that ARPA area is to have the truck discussion. I'm not saying that. We can't do it the way y'all are doing it. All I'm saying is trying to follow through the process. Okay, I have a question for you. So it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with fire trucks. Uh, <laughs> so you, you talked about a, a little while ago about we, we can, I think you said we can use ARPA money and not storm stormwater money. That is correct. Why wouldn't we want to use stormwater money? Why, why wouldn't we want to use ARPA money opposed because we, we do have a, yep. a, a nice buildup of stormwater money too. So I mean is what there there's very, could very well be an advantage to that. I just don't know. But sure. sure. So when you look at all the buckets of where the money can be spent, let, let's take the standard one-time deduction of revenue replacement off the table. That leaves 2.7 
2.77 ish million dollars sitting there still left to fund and allocate to something it gets really restrictive on what the town has the ability to spend those funds on because of what the state allows us to spend funds on not what arpa would allow us to spend funds on but an item in infrastructure is broadband well in north carolina we can't do broadband so you don't have that option so you're you get very restricted on what you can actually do so that's why that it makes it's a good you're just looking for ways to we're just looking it. for a way to spend it and then that'll allow us to spend other stormwater dollars on other projects we do have a lot of stormwater oh. money we need we, we need to spend it i mean we need to spend it on the residents and i believe i don't know if the overall study has that already been approved okay so at the next council meeting there's something to come to y'all that will look at what other projects are out there for some of those town stormwater dollars. It's, it's a system okay. study, but good. I won't take very too good. much you, of that. You answered the question very well. <laughs> Mr. McLaurin, I think you had your, uh, your hand raised. Actually, Adam and I were thinking the th same thing. He has given you the update. <laughs> it is now time to consider adopting the policy, and once you've done that, then y'all can debate the fire truck. So I want to, I want to, one thing I want to say, last piece I want to say about this ARPA update is, because the information is ever changing, what we would like to do going forward from here till whenever it needs to fall off the agenda is at every council meeting have a spot to give y'all an update. That update some nights may just be we don't have an update or it may be that there is a lot going on and we've moved here and, and pivoted right. But we will we'll work through that and I think that will allow y'all to feel more informed and know more of what we're doing on a daily basis to be able to give y'all that information. Very good. Now, um, on, on the old business that I see here, did you cover all? I, call it, I covered all of A. A. A is done unless if there's more questions. I'm not calling anybody okay, out. Okay, if there's no more questions on A, let's go to B. So. Okay, so B. B is a, poli is a policy. The way that... We have structured this from a staff level to present both for, the, for our purposes and for council is one policy. It has a sunset in it that once all of the ARPA money is spent at the end of that regulations, all these policies drop away. The reason for that is we're adopting policies because the federal government told us we have to have these policies to accept these funds and to be able to spend them. So we want those policies to, to go away at some point. There are, po there are other policies that y'all may see come to y'all in the future, and that will go. it'll be an addendum to this policy. We'll add other policies in only if we need it. This right now gets us all of the required policies that we're required to have is what's in this document that y'all would be adopting tonight if you're okay with it. And then there would be other ones in the future depending on how we spent funds if we needed them. Any questions, Mr. McIntyre? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the policy we are adopting is not really—it's not for the public. It is because we, as a town of Indian Trail, are receiving upper funds from the federal government. Therefore, we need to adopt these policies to be able to receive these funds and to be able to distribute them in accordance with either revenue replacement, storm water, or upper policies that apply. Is that yes, correct? It was to be able to. We said when we accepted the funds that we would adopt these policies. Glasma. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it comes right down to though that th this money that we're getting from the government is going in one pocket. What's coming out of the pocket for the fire trucks is the public pocket, and it is not right to put this on an agenda today without the public being notified and and it coming before for comments that sort of thing, and at least have a presentation. The public hadn't even had a presentation on the, this fire pr truck issue. And I'm all for the fire department. I'm all for, the, for all the services that we have, but let's do it the right way. Mr. Mayor, so, can we stick to the agenda and just work on the, we want to adopt the policy. Okay. The next item up is the fire trucks. I think there's going to be enough time for discussion, but I want to really kind of stick to the policy. Okay. That's what we're talking about. In, right? Any more questions? All right, well, let's get a, let, can I get a motion on the policy, on the uh, ARPA policy? Uh, I, I want to make a motion to approve the Indian Trail ARPA policy as presented to the town council. Okay, all in favor? This is 10B, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, nine, 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 B. Nine, 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 B. Nine, B. Okay. nine, 10B, whatever, okay. okay. All yeah. in favor? 
That's unanimous. All right, that brings us to uh, fire trucks. Good job, Adam. Why don't you stick around? I'm going to. Help me with this. Okay, so basically what we're asking for tonight is, um, Dennis, is a commitment to purchase the trucks. We're not talking about the money funding at this point. We want a commitment from the board. So I know Adam has talked with the fire chief. So, you know, this may take a year and a half, two years before, and we're, we're still working on the funding of said. So basically these fire trucks will be for Henry Bridge, Baker's, Installing so the three fire departments that take care of our town mm -hmm. and as Adam said these trucks are going to be funded by the general fund But it's because of the ARPA funds that make these available We pay the sheriff's contract the 3.8 million in July that 3.8 million now is available for general Fund services and that's what we're basically doing. So we're basically shifting that money So we have 3.8 million available in July. We've been over this We've got a committee, Mike, Adam, the two Alicia's, Todd, and myself. We've been uh, studying this. So it's, so basically what we're looking for tonight is a commitment. So we could go back to the fire chiefs and say, you know, get the dimensions, whatever you have to do. Order. How far along are they, Adam? Do you know? So right now, if they were to order a truck today, they're saying they're anywhere from 18 to 24 months before they would have the truck delivered to them. We know roughly what they want. We don't know the exact specifics of the specs that they want, and that's the conversations that we need to take from here going forward. Like Jim said, we've talked to them. We are moving the ball down the road with them. It's just we're, we're going to have a few more pieces to line up. Um, which trucks, how many, you know, the, those type little, de little details. <laughs> So basically, I wrote, you know, I'd, I'd like to, in five or ten years, I'd like to be able to look down at that finished product on Indian Trail Road and see a fire truck driving down there, knowing that we use money for something that's going to last and for the safety of the people. But uh, so that's basically what we're looking for, Dennis, is a commitment to go forward. Well, I understand. I just think that it, uh, it should be tabled so it goes on an agenda for the public to see it before we spend $4.5 million out of the general fund, no matter where the money comes from, because it is coming out of the general fund. And the public should be informed in advance. And if we wait a, two weeks, let's do it two weeks and put it on the next agenda so people can see it. I think that's point, point taken, Mr. Gay. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments? Um, yes, I do have a comment. Can I make a comment? Yeah. Well, certainly. Um, within here, within the town, there's certain services that we receive. We all pay taxes for it. Um, it's my thinking that we up, are up here for public good. A fire truck is for public good. I hope to not need one, but if I do need one, that I get a good one, one that's working. We know that the county, as Indian Trail has seen, has not funded us to the manner or to the level that we need. But these fire trucks service Indian Trail. They do not say, well, you didn't get this or you do not get that, or they give us half a service. There is a call that goes out. They are there to serve others in the community. Hopefully not me. I know I've had them come out to my house a couple of times on a false alarm because of smoke, but that's for another time. So that being said, um, if this item were placed on an agenda two weeks before the, the meeting or a week before the meeting, there's no debate from the public in that. That's not how this operates. Somebody could come in and make a public comment, which is welcome. It's always welcome to have the public in here discussing stuff. But this item, we as council, we've been discussing this um, ad nauseum for quite some time. I think it's time to take some action because it's 24 months out for these trucks to be um, manufactured. And if one of the council members doesn't agree, put it up for a vote. Put a vote up to table it and then let's move on. That's my two Mr. cents. Barber, I can tell you the fire chiefs are extremely excited about this. I'm extremely excited about this. I think it's like funding the sheriff's contract. And I think the spirit of the ARPA funds was to help, especially first responders and those out there that have been for, on the front lines of the COVID. And we all pay a fire tax by getting this type of equipment to the fire departments. I think it's the right thing to do. and by give, helping them out financially, which they've come to us for years, I mean years, and we contract with all three of these fire departments. And uh, by doing this, I think we help them not to have to 
asked to raise our fire taxes. So I think we're doing a great thing with this. You know, so uh, we unanimously voted to put it on the agenda a while ago. So uh, I'm ready to vote and I'm all for it. And I really appreciate the staff and the hard work meeting with the fire chiefs. And I've, you know, and I know Mr. Amberg has met with the fire chief and I have too, and they're excited about it. Yeah. I mean, I had a county commissioner said, we wish we'd have thought about it. <laughs> so thought of this idea. So I think it's a great idea. I'm ready to move forward on the vote. So. You, you know, that's all I got. Thank you. Right. Exactly. If you can't wait two weeks, I mean, that's, I mean, to me, sad. But um, I can't vote for it uh, the way it's structured right now. I'm all for the fire trucks. I'm all for the support of any faction of the town. But to put four and a half million dollars on uh, an agenda the day of the meeting and not have any type of information for the public and any kind of feedback, I can't support. Uh, I can't support it this way. Okay. <clears throat> Point taken. Uh, just quickly, would like to say that. Chris, do you have a comment? I'm sorry. I'm Chris, I, didn't I was mean to, just going to ask, what negatives are there for hearing? Can you it? speak up? I'm sorry. What is the negatives of hearing it in two weeks? I'm just trying. I mean, I fully support it, but I'm just curious. What are what, the negatives to what? To hearing it in two. If we tabled it for two weeks, what would the negatives be to that? I'm sorry. I'm 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 like you like Todd. The negative towards what I'm. If we tabled it for two weeks, okay. what I, negatives would come out of that? I don't know that there's any negatives to it, but we also agreed to do the the sheriff's contract, and there's not a lot of difference between the sheriff's contract. Of course, it, it was, was was put out there, but what's the difference in doing the sheriff's contract than 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 a fire? Now that I'm just talking on 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 what I what I believe, and uh, there's very little difference because they're both public safety. And, uh, and, and this, isn't, this isn't putting up a park, or this isn't putting up, a, a, putting up something that we don't already use and need. Uh, you know, a park you don't necessarily need, uh, things that, but a fire truck, I, I think a fire truck is, is, is something that, that we all need. It, you know, and, and not only just for a fire, but you know, you, if you think about for you know, a, a heart attack, who's always the first person always there? It's, it's a fire truck, it's the fire trucks that are always there. Uh, it's, I don't think the council's trying to pull wool over anybody's eyes. Uh, I don't think they're trying to hide anything. And listen, if people want to come out here and talk on public comments next week and say, hey, I don't like it, you can still tell us you don't like it. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Now, that's, it, it doesn't mean that it, somebody might come up here and, uh, and, and say, hey, I don't, I don't want fire trucks for the town. So I think there's been a lot of discussion on the, on the fire trucks. Uh, I don't think it's a secret that we wanted the fire trucks. It just so happens that the way the rules have been changing, that that th this is an opportunity. One one thing too, I, I and I know you guys know, and I went to a, the school of government, and there was one really good thing I learned. And uh, so I'm going to say maybe I'm going to act like I'm going to say something intelligent tonight. So I'm going to say this: I didn't realize the fact that with the ARPA funds, that if you don't spend them. You need to you need to try to spend the ARD funds by the 2024. I know it says 2026, but let's say you get a contract, and it it, it, it the contract's supposed to be done in 2025, and you're you're going to pay for it. Something happens to that contract, and you don't you don't get the bid, or, or it's canceled. The money's gone. You lose it. You don't. There is no. There's no money there to. So you got to be really careful. So at the school of government, they actually said try to spend your money by the by 2024. And we're actually, I think, trying to find ways, good ways, to spend the money. Now, you know, Mr. Gay, if you want, you know, I haven't heard anything from you on on, on what you'd like to spend it on if it's not the fire trucks. I mean, I told you I was not against the fire trucks. I'm against putting four and a half million dollars on the agenda the day of the meeting. Let me tell you, Captain James has been in here. He's he's made his presentation. It's substantially less than four and a half million dollars, by the way, and it's been done right. And I plan to vote for his for what he needs on his budget. But this was done totally wrong to bring it in here today. Well, I disagree four and a half it's million not, it's dollars was, without the public dollars, knowing about it. It's what they're asking for. It's much more than four and a half million dollars. If you you know if you go over the three years like they're looking at the fire trucks, it's much more. <coughs> so so but that was the argument not to put it on the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. 
that's when you should have made the argument for it not to be there, but instead you voted to put it on the agenda. Okay. So here I, we, I'm, so I'm we gonna, got it on the agenda. I'm mm -hmm. going to call for a vote on this because we got it on the agenda. I'm calling for a vote. So can I get a motion? I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor. Um, I make a motion for the town of Indian Trail to commit to purchasing free fire trucks not to exceed the sum of $4.5 million in total with the intent to either donate or lease one each to the following five volunteer fire departments. Stallings Volunteer Fire Department, Hembry Bridge Volunteer Fire Department, and the Bakers Fa Volunteer Fire Department for their use contingent upon mutual agreement between each volunteer fire department and the town. Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Uh, all in favor? I got four, four in favor, against, and one against, Mr. Gay's against. Uh, so with that pa motion passes. All right, thank you. And thank you for doing all the work you do. I I've sit here and, and uh, uh, town managers told me how much work and one thing that, that Adam said, and I think all of you said, and, and I'll, I'll shut up and get off my pedestal here in a minute, but <laughs> you guys are experts to begin with. I, I consider you all experts, and we're very lucky to have you, but when the experts have to study for 12 hours and they're still somewhat confused, it's confusing. I, I know it, it can be somewhat confusing for you guys, uh, all of you, and I appreciate your hard work. I do, and, and it's only for the good of the town, so... Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's move to uh, new business. Yeah, yes. Mr. Mayor, before we leave that, uh, I echo your comments, and what we will do tomorrow is we'll send out a letter of intent to all of the fire chiefs announcing what y'all have done, and within the next few weeks or so, we will have a, a plan of implementation that we have worked with the fire chiefs on. Thank you. Right. Very good. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. McCorn. Uh, brings us to uh, approval of capital reserve fund, uh, CRF ordinance uh, 41222. Mr. Wanowitz. Yeah, good evening, uh, Jim Wanowitz, fi finance director. <laughs> <clears throat> so Adam's here again, Mike. Uh, this is approval of a capital reserve fund for a long uh, discussed and for a new public safety building that uh, is in need. And so what we decided to do to set up a capital reserve fund specifically for the public safety facility. Our plan calls for moving, we're gonna seed it with $500,000 this year, and then the plan calls for $2 million out of our fund surplus every year after that for the next three years. That gets us to $6.5 Now I know, Adam, you have some idea of what the cost is gonna be or how, how far we're going, but um, this is gonna become a reality. The only thing is, once we put that money in this capital reserve fund, it's gotta be used for a capital reserve. We can't take it back out. So this is, um, this is a commitment, we're going forward, and uh, I know people are excited about it. And, um, Adam, you wanna add anything? Mike? No, this is something we've talked about. This is the first step to jump start it. So for a public works facility. <clears throat> now 10B is the actual uh, budget amendment that allows us to move 500,000. Um, so this is the first step of uh, many. We'll see a public safety building someday down the road. Thank you. Oh, okay, very good. But I, I, I need to get a, a motion on A first. I'll, 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 I, can, I can keep going. So I'll make a motion to approve the Capital Reserve Fund Ordinance 04-12-22, number 010. All in favor? Unanimous. I'll make a second motion to approve the budget amendment regarding movement of $500,000 from fiscal year 21-22 contingency line item to the capital reserve fund. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Can I say something about that, sir, please? Sure. Mr. Mayor? Sorry, I, I know. Um, Mr. McLaurin, Mr. Um, Adam, and Mr. Jim, I want to just thank you guys for your work on this item. I know we've discussed this a bit. We do need a, a bigger building. We know that the, the ones at the park is too small and so forth. But this kind of gets us in the right place, right? We are, ha we are having two lines right now. You guys are looking at land acquisition through the state, which is a great thing. And now we as a council have taken this action to get this moving from a finance perspective. By the time this comes together, hopefully if all goes well, we could have some money sitting there 
where we would not need to go into any um, finance instruments to be able to build these things uh, or to build this building and, and retrofit it, whatever we need to do. So I want to just say, you know, it's, it's good critical thinking from using outside the box measures to get to that point, but I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good. All right. Sheriff's office would appreciate it too with their plans, huh? Okay, it's that a brings us down to manager's update. All right, I'm going to run through um, several projects that we're working on just to kind of give you a preview of what's coming up in the very near future. Uh, one of the projects that the planning department has been working on is the comprehensive land use plan. They are in the process of completing the draft of that plan. You will see a copy of that plan in May along with your advisory committee, and then it will go to the council for vote, I think the second meeting in June. Um, the creating of the downtown that we've talked about, you wanted to put it in next year's budget. We've got some funds in this year's budget, so we expect to sign a contract at your second meeting in June so we can go ahead and get started with that. The stormwater uh, watershed study that you've heard about, you heard Todd say that is going, that's being kicked off very soon. We think by 2024 the study will be completed However, we will have some findings in between that, and that will give you the opportunity to use some of your funds to start to address the stormwater problems. Um, complete streets, I think all of us have talked about that. That is a very exciting project, and at your next meeting on the 26th, uh, we will need to do some more work on that and get your approval to, do, to take some more steps forward. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any questions? Mr. McCorn, thank you. Thank you for your hard work here lately. I know it's been hectic, so thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to council comments. And, Ms. Cox, I bet you don't know how we do this, do you? <coughs> okay, well, let, I'll briefly tell you. And tonight, I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go down, start at the end, and work ourselves down. But what we do is, is we, we take a hat. And we shake all the names up in the hat with all the names, <laughs> of, and you draw actually, or grab a card and and get a name of the council people, and they, you it's the luck of the draw. And then if you're picked last, you get a fifty dollar. The attorney gives the, that person fifty bucks, and then move yeah, on. So anyway, uh, but for for next time, we'll 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 let you pick and bring fifty dollars. By the way, but. Uh, Marcus, would you start us off? All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Cox, welcome to the council. Um, welcome to Chambers. We're excited to have you on, and um, we look forward to working with you. A little bit of advice is tell me some of the things I don't want to hear so that way I can make an informed decision on behalf of citizens. But welcome. Pleasure to have you here. Um, secondly, to everybody in the back here who's been on this upper train, from where it started, and even today, I learned some new things from when it started last year to now. I know you guys have done a lot of work um, working with this council in particular, trying to un get us to understand it, understand the rule changes. Some of us are in government, but we don't really work in government. You guys see that day in, day out. But I know that you all put in a lot of hours to understanding it, to preparing us. So I do appreciate that, and I want to thank you for that. Um, Mike, you and your staff, I um, appreciate the work that you guys are doing. Um, the countless hours you put in, the emails, the telephone calls, um, the um, confusion. Um, please continue putting up with us for a little bit as we go through this. We know by tomorrow morning there's probably going to be new rules that you guys are going to have to go through and get there. But appreciate that. Um, and thank you. Everybody have a good evening and a good Easter. Ms. Cox, it's going to be a pleasure working with you. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight and all your work. Uh, when I ran for election, I said I was here for the people. And so it's important to me that the people be informed about what we do as a council. And so I will always be for transparency, and that is extremely important to me. So thank you. Go ahead, Kristen. All right. I want to thank everyone for coming. I'm actually really excited that I look up and I see some familiar faces, but also some new ones. So. I um, also want to welcome Ms. Cox. Um, welcome to Indian Trail. Um, I want to welcome Union Martial Arts and Freedom Biker Church. I want to thank them for also coming in. Um, 
and the staff, of course. I also want to thank you all. You put in hours of work. Uh, we couldn't do our job without you, so we really appreciate you. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is thank my fellow board members. I feel like we really do work well as a team, and all of us have Indian Trail's best interest in mind when we're making our decisions. We may not always agree, but I do feel like ultimately we are trying to make the best decisions for the town. So um, thank you all again for coming, and you all have a good night and happy Easter. Very good. Tom? Thank you. Um, Ms. Cox, thank you for joining us, and um, I'm sure you'll lead us um, in our endeavors, if you will. Um, I just want to wish everybody a happy Easter and have a good night. Very good. Mr. Barber. Welcome aboard. I'm glad to have you. Um, <clears throat> it's always good to be on the same side as an attorney. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, uh, but anyway, also uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, Indian Trail United Methodist Church, if you want to get your picture with the Easter Bunny, you'll be there this Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. I'd like to thank everybody that uh, donated food. The Boy Scout Troop 276 and Indian Trail Lines worked together to, direct, to get together 1,286 1, pounds of food to donate to the local food bank. Uh, it was such a success and Food Line had so many extra groceries that the managers already invited us to come back. They had a good day, <laughs> so uh, you can understand that. Uh, of course, being a born-again Christian, I wish everyone a happy Easter. Uh, I've always said the churches are a cornerstone of the community. You've never seen a political party on the side of a hospital. <laughs> so you'll see a Baptist, Presbyterian, things like that. So welcome everybody to enjoy the holiday and the Easter. Have a happy Easter. Thank you. Very good. Last but not least, um, Ms. Cox, welcome. Uh, you did a great job, by the way, tonight. So. <laughs> I hope you can always be be that way. This, you know, uh, I wanted to mention a couple of names. To, uh, Hayden uh, Kramer in the back of the room. I had the pleasure of of doing the first, uh, my first mayor's tree initiative today, and um, man, you did an outstanding job. You didn't just do a good job. You did an outstanding job, and and uh, it made me proud uh, that you actually worked for for the town of Indian Trail, and I want to thank you for that. And don't ever ask me to try to do what you did. You told me you wanted me to do that. I, don't, I could never, never be that good at, at talking to kids, and I love kids. So thank you for, for doing that. You, you do a wonderful job, and I'll be there tomorrow and uh, be there to support you. Uh, Abby, I want to thank you for always being there too. Abby, you're, you're uh, behind the scenes a lot here, so, and you, you do wonderful work, along with all the rest of you. I've already thanked all of you for being on that committee and, and helping us. You're true professionals, and you're, you're, you're all good at what you do, every last one of you, and I appreciate you. Um, just like everybody else, have a happy Easter, and uh, uh, I want to just second, get a moment to uh, uh, close this meeting, but we do have a budget meeting afterwards. Let's take a 10-minute break and then come back. So can I, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? All in favor, we're unanimous.